So if a faculty member wanted to start a conversation with a student, maybe they get the accommodations letter and it doesn't feel like it fits, but they want to engage with the student and try to support their learning, how would you recommend they approach that conversation? Well, I think that's one of the challenges that we have in the Disability Resource Center is that we're really making those decisions in a vacuum. We don't necessarily know what's happening in the classroom, what pedagogy the instructors are utilizing, any group dynamics, things like that that are happening. And so I do think it's important to know that even though you have that accommodation letter, that there is still room to have a discussion about, you know, okay, this is what happens in my classroom. How would we approach this accommodation? And then sometimes when you look at the accommodations, you can tell um, that there might be a way to modify that in your classroom. So if a student has a, extra time on tests, it's pretty safe to assume they're gonna need extra time on any in-class writing assignments. And so there might be some ways to make those modifications without necessarily needing a big formal process. But I do think if there's other things that you feel are like fundamentally altering the classroom, where it's like this is really essential to the class, say like a student, if there was an accommodation that said that they didn't need to engage in any group work, and your class is really heavily focused on group work, well, in the Disability Resource Center, we might not realize that. And yeah. so once we really look at your syllabus and realize what's happening in the classroom, we might need to decide that, okay, that's not an appropriate com accommodation for this particular class. So um, I do think a lot of times it's important for faculty to remember that a student is also the best expert on their own disability. Um, so a lot of times, especially like if we have somebody who's deaf or who's blind, um, faculty will contact the Disability Resource Center and say, you know, like, what should I, what do they need? How should I give this to them? And then we end up contacting the student and say, what do you need? How do you want it? Right. When really the faculty could have had that conversation with the student. So don't be afraid to engage in those conversations. Um, but you also have to be careful because obviously you don't want to ask them what their disability is. Um, and some students are really open about their disability, so they might say, oh, I have PTSD, you know. Um, but don't make assumptions about what that means because for each student, it's something right. different, right? Um, and then also remember that that's confidential and it's fine for them to bring it up, but it shouldn't necessarily be something that you bring up, especially obviously in front of the class or something like that. You know, yeah. it's, it's sensitive information and so you wanna treat it um, with that regard, basically. Yeah, so making sure that you kind of let the student bring whatever information they feel comfortable with rather than kind of pushing them to yes. reveal their disability. Yes, yeah. but it is totally acceptable to talk with them about accommodations. Um, and so I, I really recommend, you know, go down the list of the approved accommodations and just talk with them about that. And I do think it's important too to set aside um, private time for those conversations. Try to keep that as confidential as possible. So if you have an office, you know, go to your office, have that conversation during office hours. A lot of times I know students will come up after class and they've got an accommodation letter and there's a whole line of students. And so as much as possible, try to um, Keep those students so that you can have those conversations in private and not in front of other students, basically. And I think that idea of knowing that you can have a conversation about accommodations is so important because I think a lot of faculty view the accommodation letter. Um, I mean, it is an official document, sure. but because of that, they view it as sort of this piece of information that they act on, or if it doesn't seem to apply, they just... Sort of. It's like, okay, we're just not going to deal with it. Yeah, that. we're done. <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah, really thinking about using it as an opportunity to engage with the yes. student and find out how to better support their learning. Well, and one of the big goals that we have in the Disability Resource Center and in this disability services field in general is we're really trying to help students become self advocates. We, um, in the K through 12 system, students with disabilities. A lot of times they don't even know they have a disability. Yeah. Their parents are the ones that are navigating that. And so as they transition into college, we really want to help them 
gain a way to talk about their disability and the accommodations that they need so that as they transition into employment, they can go in and talk with a supervisor and ask for accommodations. And so a lot of times their interactions with, with you guys as faculty, that really shapes the future of the way that they think about accommodations. And so to me, as faculty, you guys have this critical role because you're trying to empower students yeah. to be able to talk about these things. And for some students, this might be the first time they've ever done it. you know. And so it's intimidating for them and they might mess it up. They might say things that you know, you're like, whoa, they shouldn't be saying that, or whoa, I don't need to know about that. Yeah. And that's okay, because they're learning through that process. Um, and so I think it's really important as faculty that you're not just squashing those conversations, because sometimes they are a little bit uncomfortable, but that's a whole learning process for students with disabilities. And you guys play a critical role with that. Yeah, and I think that perspective of that accommodations conversation being a way for students to develop self-advocacy that's mm -hmm. really interesting mm -hmm. and I think something that most faculty I think would be excited about being right. a part of so right well and I think that's part of what makes a well-rounded student which is that shared goal that we all have you know it's like we really want to see our students engaged we want to see them grow and learn and develop and for students with disabilities in particular, that's one of the critical ways that they're doing that.